Hey guys, it's Craig here, and welcome back to Vinyl TV. Today we're going to talk about archiving your vinyl. And uh, by that I mean recording your records onto another medium so that they can be preserved. Now, back in the day, we used to record, some of us used to record our records onto cassettes so that we would play back the cassettes and not wear out the records. And if the cassette got damaged or worn out, then we could get the record back out and re-record it. So, um, and we were quite happy with that, you know. So I know I was. I had a good cassette deck, so I was able to get pretty good results. But these days, of course, we've got computers, and we can make much better recordings now than we could then, using these old, these old guys here. Remember these? <laughs> so... Um, so why do you want to do this? Well, you know, you buy a new record and every time you play it, you know, gets a new pop or a crackle on it. Or also you can compare the recording to maybe a year from now compared to what it sounded like when you made that recording. So there's lots of reasons why you might want to do this, or you might just want to take your music, your vinyl music with you somewhere. You can burn it on a CD or you can make a high quality MP3 or a lossless uh, audio file out of it and it'll sound exactly the same as the record. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, you gotta get your turntable hooked up to the computer. So there's a few ways of doing this, and really it's pretty basic. Uh, the thing I have to make sure I mention first off is you can't just hook your turntable right up to your computer. You need the preamplifier. So just like when you hook your turntable up to your stereo system to, to listen to records, you need that preamplifier or that phono stage. So obviously you already have that because that's the only way you're being able to listen to records. And then you've got to get the audio into your computer. Now, if your turntable has a built-in preamplifier, then you're all set. You don't have to worry about that. You're just going to be plugging your turntable right into your computer if you choose to do it in one particular way. And there's two ways of doing it. And we'll talk about both those ways. Now, the first way to do it is pretty obvious. You get yourself one of these and you plug this end into your the turntable end of things or the preamplifier end of things and you plug the other end into the line in on the back of your computer or on the side of your laptop pretty simple okay so i'll show you how to configure it in a little while we'll go to the computer and i'll show you all what to do on there but that is the basic connection to hook this up to your computer and it's perfectly fine that way um your computer's hardware will take the signal and digitize it and then it can be recorded the other way to do it and this is the way i do it because i just happen to have the equipment to do it is with an audio interface and this is something that you can plug things into and then f use a usb connection to get it into your computer so for example i have a mixer and i can plug my turntable arrangement into my mixer and then from my mixer, it goes through USB into my computer. And they're just called USB audio interfaces. I have one here that I, I bought quite a while ago. It's a, it looks like that. This one's more for recording music, like microphones, guitars, and things like that. And then it has the USB on the back that goes into your computer. So if I plug a microphone into here, then I can bring it out through the USB and into my computer that way. Um, and if I want to use two channels for stereo, then I can do that as well. And so I would plug my turntable into here after the preamplifier and then come out of here through into my computer through USB. So, and again, I'll show you how to configure all that in, in a minute uh, on your computer. Um, or, you know, you can get a box like that, or uh, like I said, I have a mixer uh, that I hook it into and it works the same way. And then you can get it into your computer that way. So it's either through the audio at the back of your computer or through a USB uh, interface, which you can buy for 50 to 100 bucks. Um, they're not expensive for this particular purpose. And probably some phono preamplifiers may already have a USB output on them. So you plug your turntable into your preamp, and then you go from your preamp into your computer. It's pretty simple. Um, some turntables have a USB port on the back of them, which means they'll have a built-in preamplifier, and that preamp will have the USB already on it. So that's what this uh, Audio-Technica turntable had before I removed it because it was having 
issues. Okay, now you've got your turntable hooked up to your computer. So I'm going to go over to the computer now, and I'm going to show you how to set this up. So now that you've got your turntable hopefully correctly hooked up to your computer, there's a couple things I want you to check before we proceed. Now, I'm running Windows 10, so if you're running Windows 7, hopefully you can still follow along and get to the places that you need to go. I need to go to the Windows uh, 10 settings, or the Windows settings, and then go to the system. Go to sound, and over here on the right, click on sound control panel. Uh, Windows 7, there's an easier way to get to this. You just go to your control panel and click on sound, and it will bring you to this stage here. Now, in the first tab, we've got the playback devices, and the one that's checked is going to be the device that you're using to playback the audio on your computer. This will, You will need to know the name of this, so try to remember it. In the recording section, you're going to look for the device that you're using to record with. In other words, how did you connect your turntable to your computer? Did you do it through the line-in jack, which is the first way I told you how to, or did you use a USB audio device? interface to do it. So whichever one of those you used, you need to select it, and so that's the one I've selected. Now once you've done that, then click Properties, and go over to Advanced. And here, you see, we want to make sure that you have it set to two channel, not one channel, because one channel will give you mono, which is not what you want. So two channel, 16-bit, 44.1 setting. Now, some people may be tempted to go up to the uh, higher settings. This setting here you could do. Yeah, you know, it's not it, either one of these. This is CD quality. And so it's more than enough to record your vinyl. But you can also select this one. You're going to be able to change this later in Audacity anyway, which is a software we're going to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the 48 16-bit. Okay? Everything else you can sort of leave um, the way it is. That's the only thing I needed you to sort of look at. So click Apply, OK, and OK, and we'll get out of there. Right, now, Audacity is free. You can download it from the internet for free. It's a great audio recording program, and it does an awesome job. I'll put a link in the description to for where you should get it from to make sure you get it from the right place. You don't catch the virus or whatever. Before we even get started, I want to make sure you know that you should get the latest version of Audacity because it comes with the MP3 encoder and other encoders already built in. So I'm running version 2.3.1. So you should have that version or later. Otherwise, you may run into some problems with some of the codecs when you go to export your, your music files. And this does an amazing job, and it's as good as anything. It All it does is use the computer hardware to record the audio. So it's not better or worse than anything else and as far as just basic recording. The first thing you do when you fire this up, it's going to look something like this. And just go into Edit. Go into Properties. And go into Devices. And there's three things in here that you should... Well, there's four things that you should check out. The first one is this. Set it to MME. If that doesn't work, you can try something else. Okay? Sometimes mine doesn't work in MME, and then when I try something else and go back, it works. So that's one you're going to have to look at you know, yourself, depending on your computer hardware. Uh, this is the one that is the playback device, is what I told you to remember the name of, because this is the one your computer is using to play back the audio, so that's the one you need to choose for playing things back on here. For recording, you need to choose the device that you're using to record your turntable with, whether it's your line-in jack or your USB audio codec. And in my case, again, I'm using the USB audio codec. And of course, again, you want two channels stereo. Okay? These you can leave. Don't, don't worry about those. Uh, as far as recording goes... You might want to check, depending on how your stuff's hooked up, if you're using a stereo amplifier with speakers to play back your turntable and you're coming out of there into your computer to record your vinyl, then you're already going to be able to hear your, your records while you're playing them and while you're recording them. But if you're just hooking your turntable directly to your computer via either of the methods that I described earlier, then you're not going to be able to hear the turntable unless you check this box here 
which will allow your turntable to play through uh, your computer, and you'll be able to hear it while you're recording it. I don't need to do that because I have my turntable hooked up to a mixer, which has headphones, so I'm all good. So I'll disable that, but that's something you'll need to do if uh, you need a way of hearing your turntable while you're recording it. Uh, the only other one you need to touch is the quality, and again, uh, 48... 44.1 they're both fine for vinyl if you want that little extra uh good feeling when you go to bed tonight well go ahead with the 48 and 24 bit gives you a little more leeway as far as uh setting your recording levels although 16 bit would be more than enough believe me i would be more than happy to choose this setting here with these two if i didn't have the other two settings available i would not lose any sleep okay but because i can I'll go up to the higher level. It's going to all get, you know, muxed down anyways when we export the audio into a file. So just take a look at this section here and set yours the same as mine. Okay, get your phone out, take a picture, and just set them like that. And that's all you need to do. Press OK. And we are ready to set the levels, the recording levels. They're very important. If they're too low, you're going to hear probably some noise if they're too high you're going to get major distortion so i'm going to go over to my turntable and drop the needle down on a spot on the record which i think is the louder portion of the record but before i do that i'll just explain if you click see these view meters here these are the recording ones and these are the playback ones if you click here like it says you'll be able to see the recording level. Of course, that's recording, that's showing the, my, the sound of my voice as I'm speaking, which means I make sure I turn off my microphone before I start recording my vinyl. Um, so yeah, that's where you're gonna look at setting your levels. And over here on the left is where you're going to set your recording level. So let me go over and drop my stylus somewhere on the record where it's loud and we'll come back and we'll see what is going on with these meters. What you want is you don't want it to go any higher than minus six. You certainly don't want it to ever hit the end of this where it goes red. That's bad. You're gonna get some major distortion there and it's not gonna work for you. So in order to be safe with this, minus six is the highest that you want it to go. Um, that way, if there's a louder part than you thought somewhere on the record and it does go past minus six, you're still gonna be okay. All right. And if you're using the 24 bit setting, you can even set it lower if you want. And then you're going to make it louder later on uh, before we export the files. OK, I'll go over and uh, drop the stylus. I forgot to mention, you're obviously going to clean your records and your stylus appropriately before you start recording them. I assumed you would already know that, but I just want to make sure you don't forget. Okay, now that we've got our level set, and you saw that this, the highest they went there was minus six, and I had set these levels prior to this recording, so it was a little easier for me to to just do it. But you, you may have to take a little bit of time and listen to some different parts of the album to make sure that it, it's not going to go too much higher than that. And now we are ready to record. So the first thing you need to do is press record, and don't worry about all the empty space that's going to be here, because we're going to remove that later. So let's hit record, and presumably you're going to record a whole album, and if so, just let the whole thing record, all of side A, and then I'll show you what to do after that. Press record, and go and drop our stylus.
Okay, so now presumably you've finished recording side A of your record, and when it's done, you press pause, which is what I did. I only recorded three songs, but this is enough to show you how it's done. So in the pause mode, you're going to go over to your turntable, you're going to flip over your record, clean it, clean your stylus, and then start recording side B. So once you've done all that, you unpause your Audacity, and you go over and drop your stylus. Okay, now that you're finished recording the whole album, and I only recorded one song off of Side B. This is just enough to show you guys how to do it. Uh, if you press the control, you can see the line here where I um, paused it. Okay, if you press control and then the mouse wheel down, you can zoom out and see the whole project. And then, of course, you can zoom back in again by pushing control mouse wheel up. And you can scroll and zoom around uh, like with the scroll bar at the bottom here. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to rewind it to the beginning. So we put the cursor at the beginning and then place the mouse somewhere near the beginning and mouse wheel up with the control key pressed to zoom in. And of course, what do we have here? Well, we have a uh, beginning part here that has par parts of me talking. Press record and go and drop our stylus. And we want to cut that out. And we also, some people like to leave this part in uh, where you drop the stylus. Sometimes it sounds kind of cool. Very clean record. But if you don't want to, leave that out. And here's how to cut out this beginning section if you don't want it. All you do is you take the mouse and you place it somewhere right before the song starts. And you click and you drag left all the way until the beginning of the recording. Therefore, highlighting this part that you want to delete. And then simply press the delete key on your keyboard. There you have it. Now, if I rewind to the beginning and press the space bar for play. If you just got the so start of the song. You can get it closer than that if you want. You can get it, you know, I, you could hear just a little bit of the the beginning there, but that's fine. And then what you want to do is you want to go all the way to the end of the album or the recording. And you want to do the same thing. So you want to listen, place the cursor somewhere where it's fading out or songs nearly over and press the space bar and listen until you hear the song finish. Okay, so right here, and we'll just drag the cursor to the end so we can see it. So it's just a little section here that we're going to want to cut off. And it wouldn't even be that bad if he left it on. Highlight it with the mouse, delete, and there it is. There, now you have recorded your entire album. Or at least you have, I haven't, but this is good enough to show you. Okay, now we're ready to prepare this to be exported. The first thing we should do is just click this little guy up here so that you can see the entire recording all at once on the screen. That's the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to normalize the audio, which means we're going to bring it up to the highest level it can be without distorting. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to enter metadata, which will show up in your player or your iTunes as a song titled artist and whatnot. And the next thing we'll do after that is label each song so that they each have their own title um, when they get exported as files. Okay, so we'll start with the normalizing. So we have to select the entire project, the entire recording. So we go up to select and choose all. See, that highlights the whole thing from beginning to end. And then up to effect and down to normalize. And set your settings the way I've got them here. And then press OK. And it will go through the whole album and it will look at the levels and it will set the levels. It's not compressing it or doing anything. All it's doing is looking at it and going, OK, this is the loudest we can make this recording before it distorts. That way your your files will be at the proper level. There you go. See, now you can see it's louder. All right. The next thing we have to do now is edit the metadata. And that's the stuff that comes up, you know, when you have it in your music player. 
Now, I've already done it, so you can see I've put the album, sorry, that the artist, which is various, because there's various artists on this album, um, and I've put the album title and the year. I didn't put the track number or the track title, because those things are going to depend on each song, and I'll show you how that's going to work right now. So once you've entered this stuff here, and you can put other information down here as well if you like, you'll press enter. And now we're going to label each song uh, so that they each come out with their own title. And then that way, when you export them, they'll be separate files. It won't be all one lump. If you want it all one lump, one big file, you can do that. But uh, this, I'm going to show you how to do it as separate files so you can have it as a, a list of songs on your player. So we're going to put, we're going to rewind, press the rewind button. That puts your cursor at the beginning of the recording. And then you're going to go up to edit and labels and add label to selection. See, now we've created a little bubble down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to type the name of this song. Okay, so the name of the first song on the record is Fanfare. And you press, whoops. Press enter. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so. And then you want to put your cursor at the beginning of the next song. You might want to zoom in. You can use these buttons up here to zoom in and out, or you could just do what I do with the control and the mouse wheel and just zoom it in and get it so that it's right at the beginning of that song, which I think it is. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, same thing. Edit, labels. Add label to selection. See, it drops a little bubble there, and you want to put the song title here. There's that. And you want to keep doing this for every song on the record. Control B also does the label thing as well, sort of a shortcut. Now it's time to save these out as files. So with all of our labels completed, I only have four here. You'll probably have more than that, but depends on the record. We're going to go up to File, Export, and it's important that you choose Export Multiple. That's what's going to cause it to make sure that each one is exported as a separate song. Okay, so we do that. And now you want to choose where you want it to be, where you want the files to go. And I've chosen this folder here already. And I'm going to choose MP3. It gives you a lot of choices. As I said before, if you have the latest version of Audacity, it will have all of these options. Um, I could go with FLAC, which is probably what you might want to do if your devices are compatible with that. But for today, I'm just going to choose MP3. And I'm doing 320 kilobits per second, which is really good quality and joint stereo. Down here, you might want to check this where it'll put a number before each song. That way the songs will show up in the proper order. And just select all of the settings I've got selected here on this screen. Like I said, if you want to do FLAC, of course you would choose FLAC and you would move forward with that. So we click export and here's where it's going to verify with you each name of each song. See, now it's putting in the missing information because you made those labels. So we're just going to click OK for each one of these. And then it's going to do the export. This could take a little while depending on the speed of your computer, but it does it separately for each song and we'll just wait for that. Aha! There we go. Success. So now we go to the folder where we saved our songs and there they are in the proper order and we can play one of them. It's the one that I wrote for the album. It's called Dream on the Horizon. And it actually became the title track, which is kind of cool. So there you have it. So there you go. You have successfully, hopefully, uh, recorded, edited, and saved out an entire vinyl record. If you wanted it to come out all at once, like just one file, then you wouldn't need to do these labels down here. And then you would just go File, Export, um, I would go for export audio so you can have more choices. And then this is where you would choose where you want to save it and the format and all that. And it's going to come out 
as one file. You'd have to give it a name and you just listen to it as one big chunk. But I prefer to do it this way. That way the songs all come out separately. And then you can burn it onto a CD or put it on a, a, a flash drive or a card or your, your phone or your computer or whatever you want. Very convenient for certain situations. Well, thank you for watching and I hope this video has helped you figure out how to get your turntable hooked up to your computer so you can record your vinyl for whatever reason. By the way, people always ask me about this shirt. I didn't buy this. Somebody, it was sent in from a friend of mine. So I have no idea where he got it from. But uh, people have, have made several comments on it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't wear it out though. <laughs> I just wear it on here. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool for this purpose. And we'll see you in the next video. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, activate the bell so you know when I've posted another video. And we'll see you real soon. Thank you guys. Be safe. Vinyl is vinyl. Remember.